you're placing a single implant, it is easiest to use the Add Single Implant button. If you're placing multiple implants, it is easiest to use the Pano Implant View. First, we will start with how to plan out a single implant case. Once you've rotated the volume so you can see the implant site, you can go to the control panel and select Add Single Implant. Now you can select the correct tooth number for the implant and click OK. Once you click OK, the implant will now be following your cursor and you can click on the volume to place the implant. Use the Manufacturer, Product, Diameter, and Length options in the control panel to select the specific manufacturer that the doctor wants to use for placement. Use the axial cross-section located at the top left of your rendering window. You can now click and drag the implant bodily so that it is in the crest of the bone. Move the AB line so that it is at the crest of the bone so you can use the measurement tool to measure out the distance between the implant and the adjacent teeth. You need to have this AB line at the crest because this determines which axial slice is shown and when determining how much space there is for an implant between adjacent teeth, you are interested in the space at the crest. You want to have at least 2 millimeters between the implant and the adjacent tooth. Once the implant is situated at the crest, take the AB line and rotate it so that it is perpendicular to the arch. This AB line gives us the plane for the cross section shown in the box below. Having this line perpendicular to the arch gives us the most accurate view of the amount of bone we have. Forgetting to rotate this line so it is perpendicular to the crest is a common mistake, but this is crucial for visualizing the bone that you have. Now that you have an accurate view for this cross section, you can either click and drag the implant to move it bodily, or click on the implant to use the yellow wheel to change the angle of the implant. Another useful tool in the software for accurately visualizing the bone boundary is the sharpening filter. In the control panel, you can set the level of sharpening for the 2D cross sections to no sharpening, mild, or hard sharpening. Using these filters may improve your ability to place the implants. This third section of the rendering window uses a color gradient to show the density of the bone surrounding the implant. This gives a quick and easy indication of whether or not the implant is placed in bone or not. However, oftentimes it is most useful to actually turn off density visibility in order to see an additional cross section. This additional cross section shows you the mesial distal relationship of that implant with the adjacent teeth. Here, you can also click and drag the implant to move it bodily, as well as click to turn on the red wheel to adjust its mesiodistal angulation as well. The graph can be toggled on and off in order to place the implants more precisely. Again, you can always use the measurement tool to confirm whether or not you have enough space between the implant and the adjacent teeth, or between the implant with the buccal and palatal ridge. Generally, you want to have at least 2 millimeters between implants and adjacent teeth, 3 millimeters between adjacent implants, 1.5 millimeters from the implant to the buccal ridge, and 0.5 millimeters from the implant to the palatal ridge. The reason why it is recommended to place the implant more towards the palatal side is because of the possibility of tattooing or graying of the soft tissue due to the implant, which can be unesthetic. Additionally, the cortical bone on the palatal side is stronger than the facial side. As you are placing your implants, you may see collision warnings that will tell you if you are too close to adjacent implants or the nerve. These collision warnings can be set in your implant tab preferences. Generally, it is good to have the collision tolerance set to at least 2 millimeters, so you will always be alerted if you are getting too close to the nerve.
Another option you have when placing your implants is to use the profile only function in the visibility section of your control panel. This allows you to see only the outline of the implant in the 2D cross-sectional views. This could be used for detecting if the implant is going through a bone defect or not. Now that you have added in the implant, you can add virtual restorations by switching to the restoration view in the control panel. Now you will have a widget appear that allows you to move the restoration so that it is in line with the other teeth in the arch as well as adjust its angulation. Use the height and width tools in the control panel to adjust its size. Make sure that the restoration would fit in occlusing with its opposing tooth. When changing to the restoration view in the software, it automatically gives you a clipped axial view to give you an occlusal view of the patient. You can switch from this view by deselecting clipping in the control panel and using the preset orientations in the toolbar. If you would like to go back to this clipped occlusal view, enable clipping in the toolbar, select either the top view or bottom view preset orientation from the toolbar depending on whether the implant is on the mandible or maxilla and scroll accordingly to get the appropriate amount of clipping. You can also view the restoration and inclusion with the opposing tooth by examining a more lateral view. If necessary, you can use the clipping option to clip the volumes so you can see more easily. Use the visibility section in your control panel to enable the trajectory and long axis of the implants to show in your rendering window. The trajectory visibility function will allow you to see the implant trajectory through the restoration. The long axis visibility function will allow you to see the central axis of the implant which can be used to compare the angulation of implants. The value of the angle in degrees that will appear next to the implant indicates angulation between that implant and the adjacent implant. Now that you have placed the restoration in its ideal position, fine tune the implant position to try and adjust for getting the best trajectory through the restoration, as well as following the suggested implant treatment planning elements. You will need to be in the 3D implant planning view to adjust the implants. You will need to go back to the restoration view in order to adjust the restorations. Be sure to keep the following in consideration as you fine tune your implant plan. The space between implants, other implants, and adjacent teeth. Reducing angled abutments as much as possible and ensuring that the trajectory of the implant through the restoration is best through the cingulum or incisal edge.